what place do you go to that generates ideas, that helps you generate ideas? I have a lot of new practices around this. I mean, I'm all like, always exploring for protocols. I have to, mm -hmm. it's like in my nature. Um, when, when I went and spent time with Rick, I, I tried to adopt his practice of staying very still and just letting stuff you know, come to the surface or the Dicerothian way of formulating complete sentences in, while being still in the body. What I have found works better is what my good friend Tim Armstrong does to write music. He writes music every day. He's a music producer. He's obviously a singer, guitar player for Rancid. Um, and he's helped dozens and dozens and dozens of female pop artists and punk rock artists write great songs. And many of the famous songs that you've heard from other artists, Tim helped them write. Tim wakes up sometimes in the middle of the night and what he does is he'll start drawing or painting. So what he's done, and Joni Mitchell talks about this too, you find some creative outlet that's like 15 degrees off center from your main creative outlet and you do that thing. So for me, that's drawing. I like doing anatomical drawings neuroscience-based drawing, draw neurons, that kind of thing. And if I do that for a little while, it, my mind starts churning on the, the nervous system and biology, and then I come up with areas I'd like to explore for the podcast, ways I'd like to address certain topics. Right now, I'm very interested in autonomic control. A beautiful paper came out that shows that anyone can learn to control their pupil sizes and without changing luminance through a biofeedback mechanism. Um, and that gives them control over their so-called automatic autonomic nervous system. And I've been looking at what the circuitry is and it's it's beautiful. So I'll draw the circuitry that we know underlies autonomic function. And as I'm doing that, I'm thinking, oh, like what about autonomic control and those people that supposedly can control their pupil size? Then you go in and there's a paper published in Nature Press, one of the nature journals, and there's a recent paper on this. I'm like, oh, cool. And then we talk about this. And then how could this be put into a kind of a post or how could this... You know, so doing things that are about 15 degrees off center from your main thing is a great way to access, I believe, the, the circuits for, in Tim's case, painting goes to songwriting. I think for Joni Mitchell, that was also the case, right? I think it was drawing and painting to singing and songwriting. For Rick, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's listening to podcasts. I don't know. That That's his business. Do you have anything that you like to focus on that allows you then an easier transition into your main creative work? No, I really like to focus on emptiness and silence. So mm -hmm. I pick the dragon I have to slay, so whatever the problem I have to work on, and I just sit there and stare at it. I love how fucking linear you are. <laughs> and it just, and if there's no, if you're tired, I'll just sit. Mm -hmm. I believe in the in the power of just waiting. And usually I'll stop being tired or their energy rises from somewhere or an idea pops from somewhere, but there needs to be a silence and an emptiness. It's an empty room, just me and the dragon and we wait, that's it. Like if it's a, usually with programming, you're thinking about a particular design, like how do I design this thing to solve this problem? Any cognitive enhancers? I've got a quite the gallery in front of me. Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> should, should we walk through this? Yeah. Uh, this is not, this is not a, a sales thing, it's just, um, I tend to do this bounce back and forth. Your refrigerator just happened to have a lot of different choices. So water. This is all of my refrigerator. <laughs> I know, right? Hilarious. There's no food in there. There's water. There's element, which they now have canned. Yeah, yeah. And yes, they're a podcast sponsor for both of us, but that's not why I cracked one of these open. I like them provided they're, they're cold. And that's, by the way, my least fla favorite flavor, as I was saying. That's that's the reason it's still left in the fridge. The this cherry is one is really good. The, the black, black cherry. Good. There's an orange one. Yeah. I pushed the, um, the sled this morning and pulled the sled for my workout at the gym, and, and it was hot today here in Austin. So um, some salt is good. And then Matina Yerba Mate, zero sugar. Full confession, I helped develop this. I'm a partial owner, but I love Yerba Mate. Half Argentine, been drinking mate since I was a little kid. There's actually a photo somewhere on the internet when I'm like three sitting on my grandfather's lap, sipping mate out the gourd. And then this, you might find interesting, this is just a little bit of coffee with a scoop of, Brian Johnson gave me cocoa just like pure unsweetened cocoa. Mm -hmm. So I put that in chocolate and I like it. it just for the taste. Well, it actually nukes my appetite. And since I'm, we're not going out to dinner tonight until later, I figure that's good.